Hello everyone, I'm Anna Rose at Beehive Quilt Shop in Wellington, Kansas. We are a brother dealer and I was about to show someone this machine that we have in our classroom and show them how easy it was to take off the plate and I realized it was time for this machine to get clean. So um, this is a Brother 3100, Brother Quilt Club machine. I have it in a Gidget 2 table with an insert from So Steady. And um, I have the machine on so you can see the light on it. Um, but it's really important whenever you need to clean your sewing machine, um, it's very best if you turn your machine off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off um, it does make the light go down a little bit, but all you have to do to clean your machine, if it's in a cabinet, is you need to unscrew these two screws. Um, I like to use just the Brother um, screwdriver. So I've already done that, and this pops right off. But if you can see in here, there's all kinds of just lint everywhere in here. So um, it's really important when you clean your machine, like this here is part of what um, the thread goes through. There's a blade is right in here that snips your fabric. And so if we look right here in the feed dogs, your feed dogs should pull your fabric through smoothly. But once you have this much lint stuck in between your feed dogs, that makes it difficult. So I'm gonna take this out. I don't know if we can get a close up on this, but look at that lasagna of lint that is in between the feed dogs. So I'm just gonna take out these lasagna pieces. So this is, this machine is probably, I mean, I, it's probably hasn't done, been done for several months, but we do sew on it in our classroom, and occasionally it's at the retreat center. I just left a little piece of lint in there. But anyway, so I was just using a small seam ripper to help get in between these pieces. Um, I'm also going to take out the bobbin case, and let's look at in here. So this is just filthy. Like, it's just, it's so filthy in here. So, um, you know, there are professional ways to do this. This is why you want to take your machine, but look at all of that lint that we're just pulling out of here. So I'm not scraping with that um, seam ripper. I'm just barely touching it to get some of that out. I like to do that because you don't wanna compact a bunch of it. You can use a small vacuum. Um, if you've been professionally trained to clean machines, they do use some of the canned air, um, but I really wouldn't recommend doing that because if you have this much lint in your machine, you don't wanna be blowing that bulk deeper into your machine because there's actually sensors um, that are there. So I've done a little bit of that work, but I'm going to go ahead and this is something from Martelli. Um, they uh, make all kinds of stuff, but I am going to use this. And as you can see here, this is just getting into all those pieces. It looks like a beautiful makeup brush, but look at all that stuff. So this is a really fine tipped um, thing. I'm just going to brush that over here off to the side, pull it off and it comes out really clean and sparkly. I'm going to go in here one more time. I'm with it. But that already has just made a huge difference. So I would prefer to do this versus using canned air um, if you're just doing your own um, home sewing maintenance. Um, some people clean this out in between every quilt. I think that is a little bit much, but I would definitely make sure this is on your monthly um, list of things to do and clean. Um, but if you've never cleaned a sewing machine before, this is safe for just about anybody to do. Um, but there, here I can notice there's one more there's a yellow thread in here um, and it was still trapped in there in between that blade. But we had a customer and she, um, her machine, uh, was a new machine, it was a 3100 and the, um, this is called, this is a needle plate that you can do all your decorative stitches on, but they make needle plates that just have one center hole um, that'd be right there and that's called a straight stitch needle plate. And so her machine wouldn't let her do zigzags because it thought that the straight stitch needle plate was on, even though she had this foot on. And that's because there's a sensor deep in the machine right through here um, that tells it which, um, which one of these is on it. And so her machine, even though her bobbin case was really cleaned out, there was so much other lint that was inside the machine, it wasn't able to recognize that sensor. So that meant it was time for a full cleaning um, of her machine. And so when you put this back together, it's very important that you don't just slide this whole unit back on. Um, this just comes apart easily and you wanna take your needle plate and you wanna put that back here and you wanna put this metal piece on first. And then, and so you're just, I put hand put my little screws in here. I like to hand tighten them and then I'll go back and tighten them up with a brother screwdriver. Um, I'm just gonna stick this one right in here. I like these 3100 Quilt Club machines cause this is called a high shank. And so it has more room in here for my hands. Um, some of the other machines may be shorter. And I'm gonna get this here. Get that hand tightened. Then you wanna put your bobbin case 
after that metal piece has gone on there. And I should have had my screwdriver right here. And then after you put this here, this needs to just wiggle just a little bit when you put it into the machine. Um, and right there, I've just done exactly what you shouldn't do. So this bobbin case is uh, stuck because of how um, I put it in. It needs to be able to rotate just a little bit. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and you, you can have a close up right there. And I'm gonna this with a so if you, you can accidentally get this bobbin case pinched. And right now, see, that's not wiggling. So that couldn't make a full turn. And that's because I tightened this up at the wrong time. So I'm going to. And what tool is that? This is the Brother Multi, it's called a multi-purpose screwdriver. So you can have it at all these two different levels. And this part here can tighten your embroidery hoop up. So it's really handy. Um, we put a USB cord on it. Um, so it's easier to keep track of because it's gray. So it could blend into all of your other accessories. So you can see here the screwdriver. If I didn't have my needle in, I could make a full turn with the screwdriver. So that I'll just show you this side, you take it apart again. So I've got that little screwdriver. So now, let me get the other one off. But don't get frustrated when you know you're doing this part of your sewing machine if you don't do it all the time. It's really not too tricky. So we've got, this. so here we go. Here, here it is again. So here's that bobbin case. So when we're gonna put this back together, we've cleaned a lot of this out. It should be ready for sewing. I'm going to stick just this metal part on here. It hugs into that corner. I'm going to drop these screws in and I'm going to hand tighten it a little bit just so I know it's there and it's not gonna wiggle away. I'm going to hand tighten this other one and then I'm going to tighten it with the actual screwdriver. I could, you know, if a good time when you do this is you should just take out your needle because you should, maybe Lauren will do that for me. You just have to, yeah, you just have to loosen the needle. So you want to um, change your needle every eight hours of sewing and a lot of people don't change their needle as frequently as they should but if you take it out when you do this process it's a lot easier to go under here and except for i'm doing it from the side down yeah that's perfect so now we're tightening this up Okay, so now this is nice and tight how it should be. Now I'm gonna slip this bobbin case in and it should wiggle just like that. So earlier before I, had, I hadn't tightened this down and then I tightened it up after I put this in and I got it pinched, but now this can wiggle. So this is what we want is for that little bit of wiggling. If your machine doesn't do that, you can have it pinched. Um, and so because I have this in a cabinet, I'm gonna reach under here and just lift this up so we can slide this back. So sometimes if people don't do this in this order, they can get their bobbin case pinched. Every once in a while, you can have a bad enough needle break um, that it will actually damage the bobbin case. And, and that's why sometimes those need to be replaced. But um, those places are here. So we have now cleaned our 3100. And so it is ready for sewing. Um, and it is, it's ready for the next project. So again, as a reminder, you always want to have your machine turned off when you're doing it. Um, just make your life easier. Um, and take your needle out at the beginning um, so it's easier to work on your project and cleaning it out. We do love this Martelli brush um, to clean out that lint and it is fun to use just a little bit of seam ripper but know that it's very satisfying and saving this lint out of your machine will make your sewing experience go so much better. So thanks for watching and um, take it take time to clean your machine.